Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Manscaped. Father's Day is just around the corner and I have the perfect gift idea for you. The perfect package 4.0 from Manscaped. For 20% off of your purchase, plus free shipping, go to manscaped.com and use code Holly. That's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com and use code Holly. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, my guest is a real life hentai girl known for her love of anime and cosplay. And she's actually going to teach me all about anime today because I don't know shit. Uh, She's a YouTuber, a Twitch streamer, and most recently signed a contract with the very prestigious brand Vixen. Please welcome Violet Myers. Hi guys, I'm excited to be on the show. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. Mm-hmm. I've been waiting to do this, so I'm glad. Really? Yeah, yeah. That always surprises me when people say that. No, I'm surprised. Like when my when Erica texted me, she was like, "Do you want to do the Holly Ranzo show?" I'm like, "Yes, do." Like I'm like, "Does she know who I am?" She's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like I would love to. Wow. Oh God. Go on. What else about me? I'm just <laughs> I love it when the episode starts starts about me. But anyways, we'll, we'll talk about you instead. Yeah. No. Um, um, I mean, how could I not know who you are? You're all online. You're a meme. Yeah. <laughs> which is kind of like, kind of how you like blew up, right? Yes. Yes. That's, I, st- you know, we were just talking about this. Like, I don't even know how memes start or like the dumbest things like mm-hmm. that you'll never think about go viral. And I'm just like, okay, that's what people want then, I guess. Yeah. And like the stuff that I want to go viral doesn't. I know. I know. The internet's such a weird thing. It is, yeah. So tell me, explain to our listeners um, what specifically, like, the meme is. Yeah, I took this photo, like, in 2018, and I guess I never realized he was in the photo. I was just like, oh, my God, this is a good picture. Like, I'm going to upload it on Twitter. And I guess, like, my agent was in the background, and it looked like he was creeping inside, like, to look at me while I was taking a topless photo. But that's... That went viral. And I didn't even realize it until I uploaded it. And someone's like, who's that in the background? I was like, oh, my God. Like, my agent's in the background. But little did I know, like, that would go so viral. Like, even it was on Instagram. It was, like, weird. And the meme was um, about, like, like saying that he was your dad creeping in the background. Yeah. Right? Like, there was, like, she's that's her sugar daddy. That's her uncle. That's her dad. Like, it was, <laughs> there were so many, like, people were just assuming. And I just, I didn't even, like tell people what who it was I just kind of made it yeah to seem like it ride. It. yeah yeah that's funny I think that just speaks to like everybody's greatest you know all, a lot of men's like fear that like their daughters would like end up getting into the adult industry mm-hmm. but you have a big family who's very supportive of what you do right yeah they're really they're really chill about it I, I don't really like talk about it too much mm-hmm. like with any job like my mom doesn't come to me but oh my god I hate my job like no like or I had this problem at work like you know like with any other job you know some things I keep personal some things I like to talk about and when I did mention to my mom that I was going to join I my whole family is open-minded so Mm -hmm. when I was approaching to her about the conversation of me getting into the industry she was like um why why auto everything you can do like because I was going to college for clinical psychology so oh, wow. yeah she was like that's like so random but I was a webcam girl before so she was kind of like well okay then that's fine like I used to cam on Chatterbait and mm-hmm. she was she bought me like <laughs> this is so funny but she bought me like my first dildo so like <laughs> she paid awesome. for it because I didn't really have that much money when I was going to school so my mom's like super open-minded and she had me when she was super young so mm-hmm. She didn't expect it, but she just wanted to make sure I was going to be safe. Mm -hmm. So that was her main concern. She didn't worry too much about, like, me having sex on camera. She just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to be, like, in this trafficking thing or Mm -hmm. anything. She wanted to make sure it was legit Mm -hmm. first. So that's why I had to tell her because I almost got into a sketchy situation before I actually got into it with, like, a professional. Mm -hmm. Like, I was on Craigslist. I was so desperate to be a porn star. So really, I was on Craigslist and I was looking up, like, ads like to join and I remember this sketchy dude was like having casting like to like suck his dick yeah in a good old casting couch casting couch but like it was just weird because it was like we were gonna meet in a 
in a like a storage room. I googled the location and it was a storage room. So like that's why I had to be open with my mom because I didn't want to get into any situations. Did you go meet him? No, no, no. Luckily, like I knew it was fake and I went with my gut instinct. Like I was like, this is not good. And my mom said it too. She's like, I don't think so. Like we just did our research and we realized like you're not supposed to audition. <laughs> yeah, you're, to be a porn star, you're like your audition, I guess, is like on camera with yeah. professionals, yeah. legal papers and everything. Yeah. So, okay, so you sidestepped that. Um, what was you, so then what was your first professional scene? Um, my first professional scene, it took a while before I actually started to like shoot because mm-hmm. when I got in, I wasn't like, I was too heavy. So they were like trying to figure out where to put me. So I guess like the first two months I was like in the gym working out. And then like my first professional scene was like for Reality Kings. Okay. Yeah. And how did that go? It was really fun because I had a makeup artist. Um, I did like paperwork and it was in a nice hotel, like in like the W. It was like different. So it was really nice. And that's when I was like, wow, this is like fun. I'm getting paid so much money. And Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just fell in love with it from my first scene and wanted to continue on and see where I can go from there. Who was your first scene with? Do you remember the person you worked with? Um, He... um, I just followed him, too, on Twitter. Um, I don't know his name, but I think it's Tyler. His name first name's Tyler. He, has like okay. a, he shoots with, like, Vixen. He does, like, the tushy scenes. He has okay. a really long dick. That's what okay. I remember. Okay. It's not the Tyler I'm thinking of. That. I could I could get his name. I just have to look at my Twitter. Okay. Should so, I? no, that's fine. Okay. okay. Well, you can tell me later. Okay. Um. So, your first scene was with this guy, Tyler, for Reality Kings, mm-hmm. and it was not... He it was, was very so, different from the storage facility. Oh, yeah. No, it was Christ. he was sweet. And um, it was very professional. There was like a lot of people on set. They made sure I was OK. It was nothing like the crisis, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Were you nervous? I was nervous because it was like there. I, did, I didn't know what to think of it. I was like, OK, well, people are going to see me fuck. Like, mm-hmm. I have to give a performance. That's when I knew like like performing in mainstream is like a performance because you want to make sure people are jacking off to you. Mm -hmm. So that that was like my first thought. Like I have to give a good performance. And then I was kind of nervous. Like I'm very shy. So like I'm always new. Like when it comes to new people, I'm like very shy. So I was just nervous on set mostly because there was new people. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, they're judging me. But I remember the director saying, dude, like I see people fuck all the time. Like you're fine. Like I'm not going to think too hard about your performance. Like just... Mm -hmm. That's my job to direct you. Mm -hmm. So that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to be free and Mm -hmm. get it over with. But unlike guys, I don't have to worry about like, if I get dry or something, I could just use lube versus a guy like he has to keep his dick hard. So if I'm like nervous on camera, it won't show as Mm -hmm. much as like a guy. Yeah. No, it's definitely harder for the guy for sure. Mm -hmm. And if you're working with good male talent, then they can like kind of position you because you- He positioned me Did you know anything about opening up to the camera before that scene? No, because I was just like so used to normal sex. Right. So when he was, like, moving me around, I was like, oh, my God, I'm, like, fucking up. And, like, yeah. you can't look in the camera. Yeah. Only for certain scenes you can. But yeah. I didn't know in, like, my first few scenes I was looking at the camera. So yeah, I don't like those scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, yeah, we all start somewhere. And, um, yeah, I mean, well, some people come out of the gate and they're, like, know what they're yeah, doing. But, yeah. but, you know, everybody's kind of, you know, you learn as you go. Mm-hmm. So do you remember what your second scene was? The bang bus. Uh, Mm Ah, of course, of course. You're in Florida. Of course you'd do the Yeah, so that was my, that one was fun because like, I could like, that's amateur as fuck. Like you can literally do whatever you want and they'll just move to you. So Mm -hmm. it was like cool. And like everyone was like super fun. And I remember like, not, I never watched the bang bus, but I just remember like all my friends were like, oh my God, you have to do the bang bus. And when I told them I did it, they were like so hyped for me. (laughs) So it was, it was a cool experience. Oh my God, that's great. I have to say Bang Bus absolutely ruined. Um, I think about them often. I know this is super random, but <laughs> so there was a scene where the guy, and this is so long ago, had a girl blow him and sing, um, like hum the wheels on the bus while she was blowing him. What? That's so strange. Right? And it was like kind of weird. So that's why it stuck in my mind. And now I have a toddler and I take her to gymnastics and we sing wheels on the bus at gymnastics. And I always think of that fucking (laughs) blowjob scene. Every time I hear that song and it's like very disturbing. Yeah. Porn ruined that song for me. So thanks bang bus. Really appreciate (laughs) that. (laughs) 
So what has been like some of your favorite scenes that you've done since you've been in the industry? Oh my God. I have, I love shooting like, well, I love shooting for Vixen, of course. Mm -hmm. Like I love like my slate scenes, you know, sometimes I hate, I hate script writing, like the script reading, but I love the way that their production is like, they make me feel so glamorous, but I love the scenes where they're gonzo mm -hmm. and I get to wear like super neon clothing and like stripper kind of clothes with like mm -hmm. the fishnet. So like, I love shooting, like my favorite scenes are like with Mike Adriano, mm -hmm. like we have a great chemistry. So like, and the fans can see it. So like, those are my favorite scenes. And then those are my fans' favorite scenes. Um, Black Draw, because I've always wanted to shoot for them. So, like, when I got to shoot with them, um, that was one of my favorites. So, in between those and then random, but, like, when I shot for Dig Drainers, that was, like, my first um, interracial scene. Like, my first black guy on camera and, like, in my personal life. So, like, that scene, like, was my first time eating ass and, like, stuff that I've always wanted to do in my mm -hmm. sexual life. I was able to explore it on camera. So, like, shooting with Dig Drainers, that one was, like extreme hardcore for me so that's like one of my favorite scenes too. i'm actually not familiar with that brand he's in florida okay is it like one it's are like you working, one guy one guy okay so he it's shoots one, it all himself right okay so it's like one of the guys that's the director the producer the talent all those things mm -hmm. but his is different because he's like really hardcore rimming and blowjob mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and that's like something i love i love rimming and blowjob so when i got to do that i was like that was like one of my favorite scenes. That's awesome. Yeah. So you said that you like have always wanted to be in porn. Mm -hmm. When did you start thinking about that? I never really thought about it hard because I used to like, I grew up watching porn. So I always thought it was like cool. Mm -hmm. I never really thought bad about the industry. And then I guess like when I started webcamming, I did a couple's webcam with this guy. Like I was dating for a while and then just like, hearing interviews and like watching like adult performers like in their personal life talk so really great about the industry I was like I want to do that too and like I've always like been super hyper active sexually mm -hmm. but I never had a lot of people to fuck so I was like well it's cool I get to have sex on camera and I get paid for it so that's kind of what made me want to be a porn star mm -hmm. just because I thought it was so cool I thought being a porn star is like how people admire astronauts. That's how I would see it with porn. I was like, man, those people are like <laughs> so cool. Wow, that's yeah. great. So were there any particular people that you really admired that you've now like gotten to work with now that you're in the industry? Um, I haven't worked with the people that I got, um, that I've admired. Like I really admired Riley Reed's at work ethic, the mm -hmm. way she like transitioned to like, mainstream kind of like mm -hmm. people love her personality that's what mm -hmm. i really admired and lisa ann because oh. i used to watch her porn so much and then i watched her documentary and i was like you can actually make a business out of it mm -hmm. so those are like the two main people i like to yeah i would say i that admired lisa ann's a good friend of mine yeah. um have you done her podcast or anything? i did yeah. okay she's so sweet how how was that it was really fun yeah and it was really cool because she's like someone i've looked up to in the yeah. industry so like sh like getting to know her and like doing her podcast was cool she's got um she's just like so incredibly organized and like really has her shit together. Yeah. And like, I mean, just in, in, in a way that I've never seen with anybody else. So mm -hmm. if you were going to take like any kind of business advice from somebody like Lisa Ann is yeah. like a, a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She really knows her shit and yeah. And, and Riley's, um, doing incredibly well. I mean, the cha I know that Riley still shoots for her only fans. So there's still like probably yeah, a good chance that maybe, you'd work with her, but I know Lisa's retired. So yeah. I, even then I wouldn't even know, I would be like too starstruck. I'd be like, Oh my God. That, <laughs> because like, it's just so different. Like seeing the person in person, like I'm going to see her at Exotica. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be cool because she did get, give me so many great, she gave me a lot of great advice and yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So how did, um, your contract with Vixen come about and were you surprised when they asked you? Oh, I was so surprised because I remember when I first started, like, I was not the type to, like, I never thought I was the type to, like, shoot with them. So um, how it came about was I was, I'm ready to start my anal journey in the industry. So mm -hmm. I was, like, talking to my agent. I was like, okay, I'm ready to do the anals and the game bangs. Like, I've been doing this for a while now. Like, 
let's figure out what company should we sign to where it can be exclusive with them. Like I was totally down with not doing it with anybody else for a long time, like mm -hmm. giving it to them and not doing it for my OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to shoot it like really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it was between Vixen and MindGeek and another company. And Vixen gave me like the opportunity to like shoot with Tushy and Tushy Raw, but also like they were like, we're going to give you a contract that's going to be exclusive to us. And it was just like, I've always wanted to shoot with them. So I was like, I'm going to go with Vixen. Yeah. 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 It's definitely not a bad career move. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, I love my geek too. And like my geek has done so much for my career too. But um, for personal, I really wanted to like shoot with them. Yeah. Well, I shoot only for MindGeek, and mm -hmm. um, I will say that they're an amazing company to work for, but mm -hmm. they're also like, you know, from what I see, from what Vixen puts out, they put out amazing stuff. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, I, I feel like whichever way you go, like, yeah, you can't Yeah, it was going to do really good. Yeah, you're going to do well either way. And they treat me like family yeah. at Vixen. Like, that's something I'm not used to. Like, it's like, I go, I go to, like, these uh, fittings, and everyone's so sweet, and mm -hmm. like, I don't know. It was just different. And I've had a really good feeling. And then the way that I was talking to both mics, like they really like loved me and admired me. They're like, we're ready to sign you up and like we're going to invest in you and like further you on. Like it's, it was so even it's an even trade for me. So mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, like it was a great opportunity. When you look at where you are now, um, you know, contracted with Vixen, um, you know, doing really well in the industry. And you think about, you know, when you first started or you were first thinking about getting into mm -hmm. the industry, did you ever think that you would get to the place that you are now? I would say, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to be okay. honest. Yeah. I, I was patient because mm -hmm. I remember in the beginning, I was like, I'm never going to do this. Like, no one's ever going to like me. But, you know, I stuck to myself and I was like, you know, there's timing for everyone. I can't compare myself to everyone. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Um, everyone's journey is different. So it, it took a while but I'm really grateful that I'm at a position now, but I definitely manifested this for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about so much more Violet. She's going to school me in anime. So um, hang tight. We'll be right back. Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Manscaped. Father's Day is just around the corner and I have the perfect gift idea for you the perfect package of 4.0 from Manscaped. Inside this package, he'll find their Lawnmower 4.0, their Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver and Crop Ball Deodorant, and Shed Travel Bag to carry it all with. Oh, I almost forgot. They also include the most comfortable pair of boxer briefs you will ever wear. I can guarantee you guys, they are gonna be the only pair of underwear you're gonna to wanna to wear this summer when it gets hot and sticky out because they are going to keep your precious jewels nice and dry. For 20% off of your purchase, plus free shipping, go to manscaped.com and use code HOLLY. That's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com and use code Holly. All right, guys, we are back. So Violet, you've been known to have sex with fans. Yeah. So how did, how did that start? That's like every fan's dream is yeah. that like they might be able to have sex with their favorite porn star mm -hmm. and most, most have their hopes dashed, yeah. but, uh, you're not out there killing dreams. You're making it happen. So yeah. <laughs> how did that start? Oh my God, this happened like a while ago. Like I used to like, this was like even before I had a lot of followers. Like I was just like, this guy is like really cute and he follows me. Like I want to fuck him. Like I didn't really think too much of it as, a, as a, like a, a fuck a fan as I do now. I was just mm -hmm. like, this guy's cute. I want to fuck yeah. him. Yeah. But how it started getting into like the fuck a fan was I just was like bored this was before quarantine and everything. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm bored. I'm in LA. Like, I want to make some extra money. I'm going to, like, pay for their fans' test and, like, sell it. Because I know guys, like, really like jerking off to, like, guys that have, like, normal size dicks. Like, mm. it's cool with the big dicks. But yeah. they want to see, like, Somebody that they real. feel like could be them. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, man, I can I can definitely do this. And, like, I remember Riley Reed did the fuck a fan mm -hmm. on her YouTube. I was like, I should do that, too. Like, that sounds like fun. Because I was already doing it. I was like, I should just start a fuck a fan series. So then that's how it started. Like, I remember in 2019, I just met, like, some random guy on my OnlyFans. Like, he was a subscriber. He got tested. We met. And, like, we fucked and we filmed it. 
And then I was like, this is cool. Like, I'm like really into it. These guys are cute. They're they're fans. Like, it, it's different when it's a fan versus like a normal guy. Because a fan is like, he'll worship you. And mm-hmm. like, he like jerks off to you. Like, he knows like how to fuck. Versus like a normal guy. He's like, whatever, like next girl. Like, I like the guys that like worship me. Like, that's the yeah. thing. So like. But like. But- so, I mean, I, I would just love to see their reaction when they meet you. I mean, do they... They're so nervous. Yeah, I was going to say, like, part of them must be like, this has got this can't be happening. I've had some troubles, too, where, like, they're so... Probably so nervous how they couldn't so get So nervous up. they can't stay hard. So, yeah. like, sometimes they can, like, fuck up the performance. But, mm-hmm. like, I'm so chill. And I can just talk to them, like, hey, what's wrong? Like, I understand. Like, it's, it's me. You're not used to, like, seeing me mm-hmm. in person versus on camera. But, like you're getting to fuck me and we could film it and you could always jerk off to this. So like, Mm -hmm. like they get out of their head and then we fuck. So yeah, it's hard sometimes to get guys out of their head when they like sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, you know, I mean, I've, you know, been in this industry for a long time and I've, you know, had a lot of situations where guys like start once they like that struggle bus starts, they overthink. And then it's like, they can't get their mojo back. Yeah. I've had that happen. And Luckily, like, um, I'll just suck their dick. <laughs> See, but that's nice of you because sometimes performers won't help at all. Yeah. And like, look, it's it's up to you. Like, everyone's I'm not different. Everyone's different. I mean, sometimes I will have to pull a girl aside and be like, look, we all want to go home. I know you want to go home. Um, maybe you could help them like a little bit. Like, just, oh, I'm a trooper. Just a little bit. Yeah. And, and then they'll be like, okay, you know. But some girls like will be like, oh, he has to get hard in his own. And I'm like, yeah, oh. I get that too. I get that too. But also like, you know. It's work. It's work. <laughs> and like, do you want to go home? Or yeah. like, what do you want to do here? Like, we all want to finish the scene. Like, dude, I'm about to take my tits out. Because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <gasps> you got to put in the work. But no, I <laughs> genuinely love sucking dick. So it's not, it's not a problem for me. What like, is it about like giving blowjobs that you love so much? I think it's because like I'm in control of the dick. Like, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I think before I even ha- like lost my virginity, I was sucking dick. So it's just second nature to me. <laughs> and it's like, it's like pretty hot when you can like make a guy come with your mouth versus mm-hmm. your pussy. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I think there, there is a lot of power around that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think of it in the same way as like I literally like your dicks in my mouth right now. I could either like make you come with like my mouth, or I could bite your dick off if exactly, I wanted to. Like too. your just dick your is, and- yeah, your dick <laughs> is in my hands. Like I could make this go either way for you. Yeah, I can twist it. Like I've, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I can do stuff. But no, I'm like also with the fuck fans too. It's like brings us closer. Mm-hmm. Like I've taken a few virginities. Really? Yeah. Wow. And it's just like. Can a you different... imagine like being that guy that gets to lose your virginity to your favorite? Oh my God. Star? I wish I was a guy. I really wish I was a guy. Cause I would be, I would be an advocate for like prostitutes. I'd yeah. be like, we need equal rights. Like, <laughs> cause I, like I, sometimes I wish I was a guy. Cause I just women. It's hard to be straight when like women are so attractive. So like, if like if I was a guy, I would lose my virginity to a porn star. I don't care if that girl in school is like the hottest chick. No, I want a porn star to take my virginity. So yeah. like, I I feel like in a previous life I was a guy. So mm-hmm. like that's why I feel really close to like my guy fans too because I get it. Like when they get starstruck, I'm like, dude, I get it. Like they want to grab my ass. I'm like. Just don't grab it too hard, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm just, like, the people person with them. And yeah. I think that's why I have, like, a really close relationship with my fans, too. Because I get it. I know what it's like to be a fan. Because I'm a fan of other people, too. And, like, I like treating them equally. And I don't like having that big head. Because I've met girls and guys with big heads. And I don't want to be that person. Yeah. You just want to stay, like, this, the violet you were before you came into the industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bet that that resonates with people. And also, too, like in this new era of, you know, the personal content platforms, the OnlyFans and whatnot, your relationship with your fans is everything. Oh, yes. Whereas before that didn't really matter so much. But now, like, that's your bread and butter. So that's I can imagine that you do incredibly well in that area because of, like, your camaraderie with your fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) That's so sweet. Um, Would you ever date a fan, do you think? Or do you think, like, only the sex thing? You know, I I would say both. The thing with dating a fan, it would be kind of hard because I'm jealous. Mm. So, like, if he's jerked off to another girl that's my friend, I'll be, like, kind of jealous in a way. So, it would be kind of hard if I was to date a fan. He would have, like, 
That's a good question. I don't, I don't but think. though any guy you date would have jerked off to somebody else uh, at some that's point. True. That's true. That's true. You know? So with the dating of fan, I feel like he'd be more loyal to me than the normal guy. Because mm-hmm. he's like always wanted me. So now that he has me, mm-hmm. he wants to keep me. Yeah. So that would be a possibility. But I don't know in the future. Yeah. If I would do that because I don't I don't know too much. It's, it's scary dating. So Yeah. I was going to ask, is it is it hard? It can be hard. Yeah. What's the biggest obstacle that you encounter? Definitely with my job. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it can be hard for people to dis- disassociate my personal life and my my work life. So mm-hmm. jealousy can come with it. And I've had guys where they don't want to date me because of what I do, because they feel like they're smaller and like the guys I'm fucking are really big. So they're, mm-hmm. that's an insecurity issue. So I'm I can have my own insecurities and like my own issues, but most of the time it's my personal like self, not my work life. So that's like a hard thing for most men to like separate the two. And mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah. So I mean, do you have a preference on penis size? Like No. No. So you no. could date a guy with a totally normal size penis mm-hmm. and you could be fully satisfied with him and then like fuck big dicks on camera and not like wish that you had more of that. I, I, my first dick was like five to six inches and it wasn't big. Um, I, the thing with, I was so scared of big dicks. Like Mm -hmm. I I still get nervous like in the beginning, but then I get into like work mode and like, I think about the, the feeling of it and then I get used to it and then I get you know, it's like muscle memory with a big dick. <laughs> so, but in my, I don't want that every day. It yeah. hurts. Like, yeah. I'm like walking around, like, I'm like, oh my God, my uterus hurts. Like, yeah. No, yeah. I think I can, I can definitely be satisfied with like a normal and small dick because I've, I, I used to see clients and I, they would have small dicks and I would want to be satisfied. So I would figure out positions with smaller dicks and bigger dicks that fits for me. So, I know how to like fuck a small dick and a big dick Mm. and still like get an orgasm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what, what is important for you in like a guy? Like, what do you look for? Obviously it's not penis size. So (laughs) (laughs) I don't think girls normally be like, I want a big dick. Dude, you'd be surprised. Some girls have been like, that's the first thing. They're oh, like, wow. He's got to have a big dick. Some girls. Some girls. Most yeah. girls, honestly, like, and I get this question all the time, as you can imagine, like, do yeah. girls care about penis size? And most, like, most porn stars yeah. are like, honestly, no, but a couple say that they do. I care more about personality because I'm like real life goofy. I'm a, I'm a huge nerd. So I that's like the first thing I look for. Like, obviously, we have to be somewhat attractive, mm-hmm. but it's like not the first thing like I'm, I'm looking for. I want like a person that's like me. Like I want a nerdy guy because mm-hmm. I want to like come home and watch our favorite TV shows. I want to go to conventions and cosplay together. That's like very important to me, like being nerdy and have having someone with like family values and you have to be a good person because I don't want to be with somebody who like leaves the table messy at a restaurant and like says that's their job. They have to do it. Like, no, mm-hmm. like I want someone that has respect for people. Yeah. Like, I find just, that the way that people treat waiters is like a really good indication of what they're like. Oh, yeah. Like and Uber drivers. Yeah. Like, I, I don't like surrounding myself with people like that. So like I couldn't date someone like that. So like my values are different than like obviously the dick would probably be last. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like something we can work on mm-hmm. together. But I care more about just family values, having a good personality, having a good heart. Um, someone that has trust and loyalty mm-hmm. because I can have trust and loyalty. Even being a porn star, I can mm-hmm. still do that, you know. Mm-hmm. Just so, those are the f- main ones for me personally because yeah. those are things that I carry with me. I want someone to have that too. Right. So you say family values. Do you want to ha- have a family one day? I would love to. Hopefully the earth doesn't go to shit, but you know, that's like, that's something I've always wanted to do in life. I always wanted to be a mom. Yeah. Yeah. I think you'd be a good mom. Oh, I would for sure. Cause I was the, I'm the oldest. Oh, and, and you come from a big family. Yeah. There's like, I have three siblings, but I grew up with my cousins. Mm-hmm. So technically it's like eight of us. That's awesome. So yeah, I was, I took care of everybody. That's great. Mm -hmm. My, I only have one daughter, but my brother and sister all had, we all had kids at the same time. So Mm -hmm. all of the cousins are like within like a year and a half of each other. So, I mean, we're all, they're all still very young. Mm -hmm. Violet, my daughter is only a year and a half, but like, I'm excited for them to grow up together Together. as they get older. Cause my cousins were always on the other side of the world. So I'd never really get to know them. 
very well, but the idea of having like a close like group of cousins to hang out just seems really nice. It is nice because we're all like nerds. We mm -hmm. all love anime. So like we'll they'll suggest me a show. I'll tell them about a show. It's really cool because they're like teenagers. So they keep me young mm -hmm. and tell me what's like cool or not. Like even with emojis. Mm -hmm. Like they tell me like what emojis to use and stuff. So like they keep me young. So anime, mm -hmm. you're going to teach me about anime because yeah. I don't know much about it. You mentioned before we started that most people think anime is like just cartoons. Yeah, That's what I thought it was. Yeah. So how is it more than that? Oh my God. So the thing with anime, they have lessons in it. Depending on the show, like um, I really love action. We call okay. it shonen, shoujo. And especially there's this one show like uh, it's called naruto it's like super popular everyone loves that show for a reason because this is like a kid who got bullied and he didn't grow up with his parents his parents died at a young age and he grew he could have gone the villain route and mm -hmm. he obviously didn't he wanted to prove to himself and to the other people that he's a good person that he can be a leader of his village so with anime you learn lessons and you learn about yourself too like i've become like a better person too because I grew up with like these anime characters that would get bullied and they end up becoming better people and they grow and with anime too um there's really good love shows like I love rom rom-coms so there's like good rom uh, romance comedies there's like something for everyone and even horror too like if you like scary you can read it's not like it's cool that it's card like animation and cartoons or whatever but there's like lessons to learn in the shows. It really depends what you want to watch. Cause I've watched like HBO shows and I'm like, this is the same as an anime. It's just, this is more lot. It's just with humans, not mm -hmm. animated. Right. It's interesting when you talk about the way that they like have life lessons and mm -hmm. that you've kind of learned from them. Because when you say that, I think about the cartoons that I watched as a kid, which was like Disney cartoons, right? Mm -hmm. Cause I'm old. Um, and I've rewatched a lot of those Disney cartoons with my daughter now. Um, cause I'm like, oh my God, I haven't seen Snow White in so long or oh, Cinderella. Yeah. And I'm just like, this is bullshit. <laughs> These are all like girls who are like weak and feeble minded waiting for men to rescue them. Like, this is a terrible lesson for people. Yeah. And I'm like watching this and I'm like, this is, this mm -hmm. is a bad example for women. And I'm like telling my daughter, I'm like, don't wait for a man to save you. Yes. So she probably likes Frozen then. Uh, yeah. I mean, she's one and a half. So like, <laughs> oh, she just likes, so yeah, she's yeah. just likes anything with like an animal in it. Like, yeah. I think she likes jungle book cause she likes the animals, but yeah. she's not comprehending the, the, um, the meaning, the meaning, but it is interesting watching the newer Disney movies, um, how incredibly different they are and the lessons are so different. Yeah. And like, I'm, it's great that you point that out too with anime, like my kids are going to grow up with anime cause, um, there's a, there's an anime called mob psycho in the beginning of the song, the intro, it teaches you how to count from one to 100. So like you can, it's like for everyone really. And yeah, the intros are cool. Like they have really great openings and, but as an adult, my mom, she loves anime. Cause like there's another one called Demon Slayer. Like there's a, a whole, like his kid, this kid who's like family dies and he becomes the hero. It's, I guess in some way, like you just have to watch it for yourself. Mm -hmm. But I always recommend, like I could, I'm like, I could tell you what to watch and you'll probably like, in you'll thoroughly start getting into it. And that's with my fans and like my friends and like my family too now. Yeah. You'll have to give me recommendations. Cause yeah. I don't even know, like, where do you, you find can, them? Um, you can watch, there's like apps, like you have to subscribe to, but there's also like free sites. I don't promote pre free sites. I like paying for like everything. Yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah. The same with porn. I like to pay for yeah. my subscriptions too. So I can give you like good apps to download. So are there, there are like anime only? Because I'm just mm -hmm. used to the regular streaming you know, services. Hulu has anime. Netflix has great anime too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you don't want to subscribe to all anime, but Hulu has the best anime right now. And you know, okay. HBO Max too has anime. Yeah. Do they? What are yeah, they? Yeah. I mean, I love it's, HBO Max. Their shows are so good. It's like a Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, it's cool too. Like, it's, I, I I could talk so much about anime. <laughs> <laughs> so so you are also into cosplay. I uh, yes I do. So what um like what characters specifically do you like dressing up as? There's this new character that I just fell in love with. The anime is called My Dress Up Darling. It's this girl who is kind of like an outcast in her class because she loves anime, but she has to keep it a secret. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm actually going to cosplay her. She's probably my favorite to cosplay because I like cosplaying characters I relate to. Mm -hmm. 
or just characters that are easy for me to do because they have the same body type mm -hmm. or like I can just bring them to life too um, with my body um, mm -hmm. even if they don't look like me but I forgot her name because I just finished the show but she's like she has like this blonde hair and she wears like a bikini that's like black with like floral print and she has like a schoolgirl uniform it's just really cool because I relate to the character with she she couldn't like cosplay before because she didn't have the right friend and then now she has like a good friend that can make the outfits for her so she brings her cosplays to life in the anime so oh wow yeah it's really cool that is cool yeah and you have a youtube channel right i do have a youtube channel. so tell us about that like what kind of content are you putting on there i have vlogs i have uh, get to know me mm -hmm. just basically like a good way for people to really see another side of myself it's literally my lifestyle anime mm -hmm. uh cooking now vlogs like when i go to disneyland or when i go to any theme park anything like i just have i have a exotica vlog of like my point of view mm -hmm. so it's just like m getting to know me better besides like seeing me naked mm -hmm. and what what's the channel name it's just violet myers violet myers okay so it's easy to find yeah okay. <laughs> and <laughs> then um search. you're also i mean you've got a lot of platforms you've got obviously your only fans you've got your youtube channel your twitch um what is your favorite way to connect with fans i love doing twitch and only fans only fans because i get to like message them personally because mm -hmm. i don't like to do it on twitter because i get bombarded with messages yeah. on, so it's kind of hard because it's like that's where i work too mm -hmm. um but my twitch is cool because i'm live like the same way you're live mm -hmm. i'm live too and i see my chat and i interact i game on there and it's cool because i get to just be myself mm -hmm. so those are my two favorite platforms twitch okay. and twitch OnlyFans. and only fans um, what kind of games do you play? A mixture of horror, um, arcade games, and I like doing trivias where we like rank anime stuff together or like I'll just just chatting. So I'll eat mm -hmm. and they'll ask me, we'll just hang out and talk. Yeah. Those are like my favorites. Do you ever get like surprised that people like just want to talk to you? Yeah. Like just you and your bowl of soup or whatever you're eating like. it is it's interesting because i was a loser in high school <laughs> so like now that people like me it's different so like i appreciate it so much more so like mm -hmm. even if people want to hang out with me when i'm eating i'm just like you could be doing literally anything and you just like choose to spend time with me it's like it's cool do you ever have people from high school that were mean to you come to you now and be like yeah want to be your friend Mm -hmm. how Especially do you guys yeah i bet how do you react to that i like literally barf because i'm like <laughs> you'd never acknowledged me my whole life and now you want to talk to me like it's so fake i i like i had this guy on tiktok put my real name of my yearbook on um on tiktok and he just did that to get my attention and i was like that's so fucking lame yeah like you could have easily just messaged me like mm -hmm. hey what's up how you been you know you didn't have to go to that extreme so it's kind of like trash to me like i don't really like that part of me is gone mm -hmm. i was like super emo in high school yeah so like i've like i'm still emo in the inside but like <laughs> on the outside i'm like i'm like i've grown up we all grown up so it's like i don't really want no one from high school talking to me yeah do you are you friends like Facebook friends with any of them and you kind of like see where their lives went and like you look at where your life went and you're like secretly very satisfied. Um, I deleted my Facebook for personal reasons because of that. But on Instagram, sometimes I'll like look for everyone and be like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> you guys made fun of me because I had because I was fat. Now, like you guys are fat. <laughs> <laughs> it's Not funny. fat shaming, but <laughs> it's funny how that happens there. It's actually hilarious because um there was this guy that in high school I was like so obsessed with I was so into him and he never paid me in the time of day mm -hmm. and then later on he got like really just unattractive okay. and bloated and my husband plays hockey with him now which is like what? so weird yeah that is a small and he world. was like do you remember so and so and I'm like oh my god yes and I was oh, like okay. I had the biggest crush on him and he was like really yeah <laughs> like, have you seen what he looks like now I'm like yeah I'm like I dodged a bullet there I only had like one boyfriend during school, but for the most part, I was like a fan girl. Mm -hmm. I like I had crushes on like celebrities. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't have crushes on those guys. Right. It's cool, luckily. Is that maybe why you kind of understand like the fans who like get nervous when they meet you and yeah. like you you 
you know, you had, you were a fan. So you yeah, get it. I calmed it down. Like, they're like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. Like, I'm like, dude, calm down. Like, it's just me. Like, I just, you know, I'm just, I just have sex on camera. Like, yeah. if I was Beyonce, yeah, you can act like this. <laughs> but I'm just, you know, I'm a normal person. <laughs> so people have called you the next Mia Khalifa. Um, I, I personally don't know what that means. Oh, um, yeah. wh- why do people say that? You know what it is? It's because we have big nose, thick eyebrows, and big eyes. And we both look Middle Eastern. So that's the reason why oh. people say that. And also the same way, because we have like a scene together. It's like we didn't shoot together, but it's like a versus. Like okay. Mia Khalifa versus Violet Myers for Bang Bros. Because we I did her part two to the hijab scene. It's oh. where she got hate. Yeah, which is basically what made her like so fucking famous. Yeah, so I did... I played her sister, her younger sister. So that's why people call me that. And I don't get offended. Like Mia Khalifa is so cool. Like props to her for like Mm -hmm. um, doing really well. But um, I feel like we're totally two different people. Like she's more of sports and I'm more of anime. And like she's not even Arabic. Like she's Lebanese and I'm Mexican and Turkish. Like there's like no like similarities. But Mm -hmm. um that's why, because Bang Bros put us against each other. But, I mean, she hasn't worked for Bang Bros in years, and she actually has come out and said, like, She's that like, she regrets it. Yeah. So it's kind of surprising that they did. I guess it's not surprising. Just capitalize she did on that, her name. She still, like, I think she still gets paid off it, because, like, she, she get, I think she had royalties. I'm not sure, but I don't know. Wow. I just don't, like the way she like disrespected the industry like yeah. it's you know what i mean like she made it seem like they forced her when you know we're all young and we like do we all have our mistakes but i wouldn't really go about saying like you're basically like forced i don't know yeah i don't yeah. think that's cool like even when i'm done like i have nothing but good things to say about the industry yeah i mean there there's something to be said for taking responsibility for your own actions if you're an adult then you're an adult and yeah but you know just say it's a mistake don't go and say like you're like at work, we're in like harms when we're not, you know? Yeah. So you wore a hijab for that. I did. Yeah. How was that? It was, have you gotten like blowback from that? There was another one where I did get like a bunch of hate because the dude cummed on my hijab, which I understand is super disrespectful to mm-hmm. like that culture. But I didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. I was still kind of new. And like, I was like, I just want to shoot a scene. So I was like, all right, if they want me to do this, fine. And I should have listened to my agent because he's like, don't do that. But I was like, I need the money. And, yeah, you know, I had no choice. So I learned my lesson and like I will never do another scene like that again because yeah. it's like I'm older now mm-hmm. and like, I see it as a huge disrespect. So mm-hmm. I would. But at that time, I was like, oh, my God, I'm playing her sister. Like, this is so fun. Yeah. And it was a cool time period for me, but I won't I will never do that again. Yeah. For I mean, respect. I'm, I don't know. I'm just I guess I'm not surprised, but I feel like I should be surprised that they're still putting out content like that. Uh, this feels kind of cringy. And like people still want me to do it. Like there's like this Twitter account. It's like, Bye, keep doing like yeah. do another hijab. But I'm like, I just I can't. Yeah. I'm Mexican. <laughs> I can't do I'm not Muslim. I don't have no religion. Like, you yeah, know, I just can't. Um, are you are you not a religious person at all? I'm spiritual. I'm a free spirit. And like my mom's a spiritualist, too. Um, I think I believe in God for sure, but I'm not like a Christian where I'm shoving it down people's throats. Like mm-hmm. if you want to be um, what, are, what are those people called that don't believe in God? Agnostic or atheist? Atheist. Okay. Like I'm cool with whatever. Just like don't talk. I don't like talking about religion because mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. Like I just I definitely believe in something, but I, that's just something in my personal life. Because then they're like, how do you believe in God if you have like in Jesus if you're a porn star? It's like. That's, like, something where I just get a bunch of hate for, too. Yeah. But also, like, people have such, I think, like, a narrow-minded view of... I mean, Christianity is supposed to be about, like, embracing and loving everybody. Yeah, it's so hypocritical. Yeah, I mean, I I just feel that a lot of times people take, you know, that that Jesus figure and then they use it to, like, cast their own, like you know, stigma against you and their own judgment against you. Yeah. I feel like that's not supposed to be like the message Mm -hmm. that Jesus meant. I I don't know. Yeah. And I feel like I judge people based on what their actions are. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it on their job. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not hurting anybody and I'm not doing anything wrong. Like I think hurting somebody is like, 
murdering somebody or like mm -hmm. R-wording someone, you know, I'm not doing any of that. I feel like I'm, we're like, we're sexual therapists, you know, mm -hmm. we're not doing anything wrong and we're, we bring a lot of happiness to people. And I agree. The same way people admire gamers and YouTubers are the same way people admire us too, because we're sexually free. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't care because we're open, we're naked, you know? Yeah. And I think that bothers a lot of people because we're confident in ourselves. Yeah, I think there's a there's a lot of people see a lot. There's a lot of threat to like a sexually confident, open, unashamed woman. Oh yeah, for sure. That intimidates a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, I am glad that um, you are not one of those people, and that you're you're happy being who you are, and that mm -hmm. you're confident being who you are. Yeah, I don't. I'm never gonna regret it. I look forward to telling stories to my kids one day. Like. I'm going to be super open, like the same way my mom raised me. I'm going to, you know, be the same way. But that's like in the future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Violet, thank you so much for coming on. It was such a pleasure to meet you. It was great having you, like have, meeting you and being on the show yeah. and everything. Thank you. Um, and hopefully when you're done with your Vixen contract, maybe we will work together. I would love to. I would love to. I look forward to that. Yeah, it'll happen. <laughs> um, in the meantime, can you let everybody know where they can find you online? Yeah, so which camera should I use? Oh, oh that camera. Okay. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> okay, so you guys can find me. I'm just um so it's easier. It's just Linktree slash Violet Myers. I'll have all my links there for my YouTube, my Twitch, my OnlyFans, and Instagram. Fantastic. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch live streams of my interviews, such as this one, uh, join my Patreon at patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening wherever you are. And we'll see you next week. There is no question that Manscaped is at the top of the men's grooming game. For 20% off of your purchase, plus free shipping, go to manscaped.com and use code HOLLY. That's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com and use code HOLLY.